Hello and welcome to video number one in our Kipware T-Series. In this uh, initial video we're going to show you a little bit about the cycles that you can create with Kipware T's conversational screens. I'm going to explain to you a little bit what conversational means, show you the power that we pack into these conversational screens so you can do uh, pretty complex machining by just uh, using a fill in the blank forms. And uh, we've got a part that we're going to go through in this uh, Kipware T-Series. Uh, it's not really important to remember the dimensions, just to remember uh, the kind of the shape and the contour of the part. But uh, I'll go through just some of the dimensions here, so you explain some of the features. Uh, we've got uh, one diameter here, which is a half an inch, with a 100 by 45 uh, corner break here, and a 50 by 45 corner break here. Uh, we've got a groove in the part, and we've got a taper on the back end of the part, which is uh, 433 long, and a 30 degree angle uh, in this direction. That's leading up to a di couple of diameters with some corner breaks. This is a 100 thousandths uh, corner break here. And then we've got an interior radius between these two diameters of 200 thousandths. So it's, qu it's a quite complex part. Uh, we've got some tapers, some radiuses, uh, angles, diameters that we're going to create uh, the roughing and finishing toolpath for this part from a simple conversational screen. No drawing required, uh, no nothing, just a conversational screen. So let's dive right in. So this is the main screen in Kipware T. Uh, we have access to all our conversational cycles here. Uh, we have access to the sketch pad. If you have a shape that doesn't fit into the standard category for a conversational screen. And then we have our C axis and Y axis menus which can be accessed uh, through these buttons here. In our case we're going to use a uh, simple OD turning menu. And uh, to start off with the first thing I'm going to do is give the cycle a name and I'm going to call it OD turning. The way the simple turning cycle works is we can have any unlimited number of combinations of diameters and faces. Uh, so we're not limited to five or six or eight, we're, li we're unlimited. You can put as many uh, diameters and faces in to create the profile for the part. And you can see for we've got uh, every section contains two diameters and a face. And we've got three corners, corner one, corner two, and corner three. Corner 2 can have any radius that the user wants between the two diameters. Corners 1 and 3 can have a radius on the corners or they can have any angle, uh, any length, any angle determined by the user. If I pull up my form here, you can see what we've got here is we've got one diameter here which is this square corner here. And then we've got corner 1, corner 2, and corner 3. And then we've got another one where corner 3 on this becomes corner 1 corner 2 and corner 3. So you can see how the uh, sections of the part come together and then you can just keep adding other sections if the part had more diameters or radiuses. But what we're going to describe is corner 1 here and corner 2 here. So let's jump right into putting some numbers in here. Our first diameter, uh, even though you don't know the dimensions, it's uh, 1.750 and the length is going to be minus 1.558. The next diameter, which is the next diameter down, is 1 inch, and the face of that is minus 750. So if we take a look back at the part again, corner 1 has a radius, corner 2 has a radius, and corner 3 has this taper. So we're going to come in and say corner 1 has a radius, and that radius is 100 thousandths. Corner 2 has a radius, that radius is 200 thousandths. And corner 3 has a chamfer. The length of the chamfer is 433 and the angle is 60 degrees. So we've got this section of the part described and we put add to the elements. So now we begin to create our elements. And I can bring those elements back anytime and make any changes that I wanted. Uh, if I wanted this uh, number 1 I can hit edit element brings it back everything that I've input. I could change the corner values, I could change the angles, I could change whatever I want, hit save edits and that would update uh, this particular element. Now you can see that as we described before corner 3 becomes corner 1 on the next section and the software automate puts that together so uh, it knows that the diameter in the face was the last diameter and face that we put in. The next one is going to be a half an inch and zero. So now we're describing this corner. And what do we've got? We know we've got chamfer or that big taper on corner number one. Our corner two doesn't have anything so we're going to let corner two slide 
and corner one has a chamfer. That chamfer is 100 by 45 degrees. Again, save the elements. Now we have two elements in our, in our uh, drawing. So now that's pretty much it. We've got uh, all the corners and diameters described. We've got this corner with this diameter and face, and then we've got this corner with this diameter and then this face. So now that we've got the part described, now we can describe the cutting parameters. Amount of clearance, so this means that whenever in X and Z the tool needs to wrap it around the part, it's going to use 50 thousandths. Uh, let's go 50 thousandths with a depth of cut and leave uh, 10 thousandths on the diameter and the faces for finish. Well, the retract amount, so that means every time it takes a depth of cut and has to come back to the front to do it again, that's going to do it, uh, it's going to retract the tool by 50 thousandths. And now I come to our speeds and feeds that we want to rough and finish. I'm going to select here rough and finish and I'll come back in a minute and explain these to you. But then we're going to go into our Kipware CSF. And now Kipware CSF allows us to build a database of cutting parameters that are always available for us. Now you can see when I start CSF I have rough and finish turning that's already been selected because that's what I have on my form. I can come down and I can select from the material that I've uh, created in my database and we'll cover Kipware CSF in another video. Uh, but let's say this part is aluminum. I'm going to use uh, what I described as my carbide cutter. I calculate, which means it goes back into the database, finds those RPMs, those surface feet and inches per revs uh, to be able to rough and finish. And when I hit record, it automatically puts them in the form. So using Kipware CSF allows the software to add some consistency to your programming. Once you've got speeds and feeds, your favorite tool that you like to use to do these particular operations into the database, uh, very easy to put those back and put those back into the form. Now again we can come back to the bottom and decide how do we want to machine the part and here's where the power of uh, Kipware really comes into play. Uh, we can select rough turning or rough facing or finish turning or finish facing or any combination of the four. So I could rough turn it turning meaning uh, we're going to take depth of cut next and we're going to cut in Z and I could finish face it which means uh, we're going to take a cut along the uh, Z axis. So I can do any combination of those two and I'm going to select for this particular operation right now rough turning and finish turning. So we're going to take depth of cut next and cuts along the Z axis. Again more power that comes with Kipware is I can create either a CAN cycle G-code program or I could create a longhand G-code program. Uh, the longhand being just geo o geo one geo o geo one to be able to create the path. The can cycle being either a Fanuc, Okuma, or Fagor output for a can cycle command. So let's see what happens. We got the part described. We got the cutting parameters described. Create the program. It tells me that OD turning has been added to the program. Which OD turning? So OD turning has been added to the program. So what happens now is I created a cycle and I put it up into the tree. Let's see what the toolpath plot looks like for this particular cycle. So here we are in Kipware TP and when I select a cycle in Kipware TP from the menu in Kipware T the program automatically gets loaded to the plot box and I'm ready to plot. I'm going to select turning plot and then you can see that everything here has been roughed as well as semi-finished and then finished. So these chamfers and radiuses are not simple corner breaks. The software is actually going in there and roughing according to the depth of cut and then coming back and cutting a, a semi-finished cut to take rid of all of the uh, roughing cuts and then a finished cut that we've decided we wanted to do both uh, OD uh, turning. So if I return to the software, my cycles in the tree I can make any change that I want to this cycle. Just quickly, uh, the next video we're going to go into a little bit of depth of this, but let me just show you the power that we have in this particular cycle, is I could do a rough facing and finish facing. Recreate the program, and it's done. I can come back to Kipware TP, and now let's see what the plot looks like for that cycle that we created. Now you can see that we're doing depth of cut along the z-axis because we're doing it in a facing motion. Again, we got a semi-finish cut that comes in, takes out all of the roughing passes and then the finish cut which uh, comes back and finishes the profile. So that's basically how to create a cycle, a conversational cycle. And what do we mean by conversational? Basically what we mean is fill in the blanks. Uh, you don't need to make a drawing. 
All you need to do is call up the form, input the information, and then the software will go through and create the cycle. In video number two, we're going to show you a little bit more about what we can do with those cycles, uh, how we can be a little bit more uh, copy cycles, uh, convert cycles, change cycles, recall cycles, uh, and do those kinds of things with the conversational cycles in video number two.